Okay guys, thank you for finding my channel. I'm gonna show you in 10 minute sections how to put this scene together. So let's get stuck in. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna look at world building. This is something that often goes overlooked. World building is how you tell the story of your world simply through the visuals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this alleyway here into a building. So I'm just gonna make a few uniform changes before I do that. I'm gonna make that exactly 0.2 and I'm gonna make that exactly 10, just so I know what I'm dealing with here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. And finally down here. And I'm just gonna click the Y, go overhead, make sure everything is still lined up like so. Right, I'm gonna move my character out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to duplicate that and bring it forwards to here to create the basis of my wall. Now at the moment this is two meters high. Buildings tend to be a little bit higher than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make all of these 10 meters high. And you can see when I do, obviously the tiling changes and I'm gonna to need to fix that pretty much straight away. So I'm just gonna pick these walls up here to make the edges of my building. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back into my tiling here and I'm gonna increase the tiling even more that way and I'm probably gonna to need to increase it this way as well so that looks like a building. It's usually a good idea to do this with another object in scale right next to the building. So this is a person. Do those look like bricks? No, they don't. So let's mess around with them, play with the settings until they do. Okay, so we're gonna go with six by 4.75. That's roughly the scale for my building. Okay, so obviously now I've got the start of an apartment block. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group all these objects together. I'm just going to make these three walls the child of this wall so that when I move the master wall, it moves everything at the same time. So far, so good. I've got one building. The great thing about Unity is that when you've got one the way you want it, you can just duplicate it and now you've got two. At the moment though, this isn't the way I want it because it's a building that has no windows and doors. So I'm gonna create some windows and doors now. I'm gonna to go to game object, make a 3D object, and I'm gonna create just a simple cube like this. I'm gonna bring this cube out to where my person is so I've got an idea of scale. And I'm gonna use this to create a simple door frame like so. So my door frame needs to be, I would say, 2.5 meters high maybe. Lift that up and set it into the wall. My character's quite tall, my character's two meters high. That's gonna be the start of my door. I'm gonna put my door over here. All I'm gonna do now is duplicate that, take it out like so. And if I hold Command and rotate, it rotates it through 90 degrees. Then I'm just gonna put it up here and I'm gonna shrink it down so it's roughly the size that I want it. So in order to make this look like a door frame, I'm gonna to need to put a new material on it. And in order to do this, I'm gonna bring in some textures, just a few textures that I've been working with that are gonna help me sell the illusion of my scene. And the first one is wood here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a material. And I'm gonna call that material wood. And I'm gonna drag this wood texture up into the albedo of that material, like so. And then I'm gonna drag wood onto this door frame here. And if we get close to it, you can see, I might need to tweak it a little bit, but that kind of looks like a wooden sort of texture. Now here's the thing about world building. That looks like a brand new door frame, but in my city, my city's kind of run down and dirty and, and broken. So I'm gonna create another material here. This time, I'm gonna call it rotten wood. And in rotten wood, I'm gonna use this texture here. I'm gonna drag that on, so when I put these two side by side, you can see the difference in the two materials. Up here, you'll notice that we're getting this kind of this overlap effect. The reason for that is because it's trying to render or show two textures at the same time. If I just pull this one ever so slightly out in front of the others and make sure it's the right height like that, we shouldn't have this problem. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rotten wood texture on everything like that. And suddenly you can see I've got the makings of my very own rotten doorway right there. If I were to duplicate that, bring it down, grow it to fill the hole, shrink it and set it back. Then you can see I've got the start of my very own door there. This door is never intended to open, so it doesn't actually matter if it does or not. I'm just gonna create a quick sphere, shrink that right down, and I'm gonna pop that on the front of the door outside there. And I will just drop this wood texture on there, see what that looks like, textured in wood. Yeah, that kind of works. Now I've got one in place, 
I can group them all to make one object. So I'm going to shift select all of these, drag them into here, and if I want to, I can duplicate that door, take it to the other side of my building, and move it through to the other side, and of course, finally, rotate it round through 180 degrees. 180 or minus 180 doesn't make any difference. Move that into place and put that door up this end. And now I've got a roughly symmetrical building. One entrance, one exit. We're never intending to actually go inside this. It's all window dressing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some windows. And again, we're never intended to actually go inside this structure. So we don't have to be real windows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the whole thing here. And I'm just going to decide what I need. I probably don't need that sphere. So that can go. And I probably don't need the doorway. So that can go. What I do need, if I just unparent and child these again, drag them down here, is I need to duplicate this top bar here. Because I'm going to bring that down. And we're going to make the start of a window. I group them up again, like so. Rotate that through 90 degrees, lift it up into the scene, I've got the start of a window that's going to go maybe there. Like we did before, let's duplicate one of the edges, bring it up into here, grow it, and make sure it sinks into my scene. Final thing is to create a new material. This one I'm going to call glass, and I'm going to drag the glass up into the albedo and this time I'm going to take the smoothness up really high and watch what happens down here when I do. It makes it kind of really shiny and reflective. I'm going to put it up to about 74, 75. Drag that glass into there and of course make sure that that is one solid window like so. I can now duplicate that, take it over to the other side and put it on the wall for all to see. Using this process, I can very quickly texture this whole building to make it look like it's a real lived in apartment building or shop or shop front or whatever else. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to drop into a quick speed modeling mode and show you how this all works out. So you can see here with the fire escape, I'm actually doing a couple of things. First thing is I've created these steps, and I know they're not even, they're not perfect. But I've also created this ramp here. Now if I go up here to where it says global, I can move it up and down like that. But if I change that to local, I can move it along the length of its own axis, which is quite useful. I can move that into position. Now what I'm ultimately going to do when I'm finished with this here, I'm just going to kind of zero the rotation on this. I'm going to use this as an invisible ramp so that the player can actually get up. To that platform. It's going to look like they're climbing on the steps, but really they're going to be going on this invisible ramp here. And all I do to make it an invisible ramp is I come over to the inspector and I turn the mesh renderer off. You can see the ramp is still there. The player will be able to run up it, but they won't see it. They'll see the steps and they'll think they're running up the steps. So now I'm going to group all of those objects together under the top step, like there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that and I'm going to take it up there like that. I can see a problem already. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to take it, rotate it round through 180 degrees and I'm going to put it there like that. Final thing I'm going to do with all three of these is I'm just going to sink them into the wall a little bit so the player can actually get to them. And now I'm going to save this, Command S, and do a quick play test. These stairs. Jump on that. Yes I can. Okay so the platforms are too narrow. That's what my test has revealed. The three platforms I've got here, 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 are too narrow. And there we go. I can get up onto and eventually into the building.
That concludes this 10 minute Unity tutorial on world building. In the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at adding a little flavor by creating posters and all sorts of other things to fill our scene. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>